It seems every few months a new indie game takes the Switch community by storm. We saw it with Golf Story, Enter the Gungeon, Celeste, and others. Well, get ready to see Indie Fever unfold all over again. This time for Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition. The Special Edition is portable, runs at a crisp 60 frames per second in docked and handheld modes, and adds a bit of extra content for those who already experienced the original. The added portability in particular fits the game so well, albeit a first time player, I'm convinced Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition is the definitive version of the game. A delight in every sense of the word. Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition drops players into a cold, mysterious, and brutal world sporting treacherous mountaintops, seedy forests, and mysterious underground facilities. Hyperlight Drifter is very visually pleasing. The gorgeous efforts and scenery are a constant treat for the eyes. Small touches such as wildlife scattering upon entering a forest or snowflakes floating across the scene on a mountain summit. These things help the game's world feel alive. Meanwhile, the game's ominous soundtrack sets the tone for the game's foreboding atmosphere. With little to no direction from the game itself, you're truly exploring this lonely world how you want at your own pace. The intriguing setting holds the player captive throughout the game, but unfortunately it never does much more. You'll stumble upon mysterious scenes that beg the question, what happened here? Unfortunately, the game does not offer any answers up front. Instead, it just keeps going with that unwavering, isolating ambience. Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition foregoes written dialogue for pictures, so for example, when encountering an NPC in the wild, it will usually begin with the NPC stylishly slaying a pack of monsters before speaking to you. You will only be given some somewhat ambiguous pictures that serve purpose such as foreshadowing an approaching battle. Concrete resolution or something that really puts a bow on the entire experience never occurs. Hyperlight Drifter threw me into a secretive, dying world, and it retained that status even after I fought my way through it. So now I've spent a chunk of time talking about the crumbling, heaving setting, but don't get the impression that Hyperlight Drifter is slow. The apocalyptic wasteland part is accurate, but to survive, you'll have to slash, dash, and shoot your way through hordes of skilled enemies and hazardous environmental traps. This is not an easy game, but it is a forgiving one, and the challenge suits it well. In such dangerous environments, the slightest mistake is rewarded with death. One misaligned dash and the entire horde of monsters around you will leave no chance of escape. However, as you learn the ins and outs of the combat mechanics like slashing enemies to refill ammo, you slowly evolve into an agile, beast-slaying machine. Clearing once daunting rooms in a dash-filled fury of swipes is a blast, and it feels so good. Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition is fantastic, and one of the best Switch indies out there, and I personally believe you're doing yourself a disservice by not playing it. It's a wonderfully unique world, boasting beautiful sounds and imagery, plus it's complemented perfectly by incredibly smooth combat. On top of the portability and smooth performance, the special edition tune-up offers some great content for returning players, such as items and outfits. The team over at Abbey Light should be commended for this marvelous porting job, and the developer Heart Machine deserves all the praise they can receive for this magnificent game. Thanks a lot for watching, be sure to check out our other reviews that are on the screen right now. We do indie games, first party games, and also be sure to check out our opinion piece videos. Thanks a lot guys, talk to you later.